on the turkey tail, what you're seeing here, if you were to look at that closely, you'd see that there are all these little pits in it. So if you rub your fingers across it, you can actually feel the pits and it's got texture. So this is a ubiquitous polypore on nearly every continent. It delignifies many types of hardwoods. So it's a very important part of the forest ecology. It breaks down trees and, and cellulose and lignin, and it, it uh, makes the carbon, uh, it brings the carbon and recycles it for a lot of other types of organisms. So it's extremely important, important that we have turkey tails and other similar mushrooms in the forest. Um, and the extract, especially the PSK in Japan and PSP in China, uh, are widely researched for uh, in clinical trials and in vitro and in vivo studies. Again, another example of the colors, the zoned hairy cap showing the false turkey tails. They grow in similar habitats than the true turkey tails, but again, they're not toxic, so no worries as far as toxicity. Actually, uh, turkey tail mushrooms, if you pull off one of these small ones here in the woods when they're fresh and you can chew on them, and if you chew them for a while, they'll actually get to be soft and like chewing gum, mushroom flavored chewing gum. And you can get some, a lot of the, the beta glucans uh, into your digestive tract. You just swallow the juice and eventually you could even swallow the mushroom once it's tenderized after about 15 or 20 minutes of chewing. And uh, I've been in the habit of doing that for many, many years. They can be extracted pressure dried. When you're harvesting them on a, on a log, make sure to, when you get home and you're planning on storing them for long term, of course, you can put them right into water and boil them and use that as a soup stock and add vegetables and other things um, to get the immuno benefits. And that's how it's oftentimes traditionally used. Many of these mushrooms are, can be made into a strong tea. You can't really tenderize the fruiting body enough to, to make it palatable like you would shiitake. It, it requires chewing or tenderizing in some way. But you certainly extract a lot of the active goodies and then you can make it, make, use that as a stock. And it has a nice mushroomy flavor. It's not too bitter, unlike um, reishi, which is quite bitter, and some of the other mushrooms. This one is very bland tasting and makes a very good stock. So I harvest them widely and use them frequently. <clears throat> Here are the, some of the clinical indications uh, in Japan and Asia for PSK, which again is the crude extract <clears throat> containing a number of different types of large polymers and probably smaller polymers as well, or smaller compounds as well. Um, so it's been used and studied for cervical gastric cancers, especially those are the most common kind of cancers uh, with, that there are clinical trials available. Uh, carcinoma of the nasopharynx, uh, glomerulonephritis, sarcoidosis, uh, idiopathic nephrotic syndrome, so kidney uh, disease, lupus, which is an autoimmune syndrome. So I, I mentioned, can it overstimulate cytokine production and promote inflammation in autoimmune conditions? It's, it's not known because unfortunately there are no clinical trials or very few available. There are only a few clinical trials available on uh, using medicinal mushrooms with autoimmune conditions like lupus. And it shows a benefit in some cases. So it's not as, uh, you can't you can't just say because it stimulates cytokine production that it's going to be bad for anybody with a chronic inflammatory condition uh, like an autoimmune condition. It's not so simple because the immunomodulation is wide ranging and it could could be opposing um, signaling going on. Herpes certainly any type of viral syndrome. So fewer outbreaks of genital herpes has been demonstrated. Uh, with increased cellular immunity. Again, hyperlipidemia, reduced LDL stages uh, levels uh, in stage two hyperlipidemia. That's pretty, pretty um, useful. PSP is the Chinese equivalent of PSK. Again, it's a crude extract of turkey tails made enzymatically. Uh, and again, cancers of the digestive tract and lung and you're seeing the dose here, three grams a day per orally. 
That's what I said was a, to me as a minimal therapeutic dose is about three grams up to five grams per day with chemo and radiation. And when the, again, when the mushroom was given with chemo and radiation, less side effects were noted, including less anorexia um, or loss of appetite, fatigue, muscle pain, myalgia, higher body weight, and improved immune status. So very useful. And that's what the clinical trials are hopefully will show uh, in North American studies. Esophageal cancer, higher emissions with PSP and chemotherapy. 72% remission versus 42% on chemo alone. Very significant. In vivo and in vitro tests with PSP and PSK. I'm not going to go into all of these, but you can see some of them here. Prolongs effective antibiotics. Uh, enhances antiretroviral um, effects, uh, provides interferon stimulation, uh, whole, body, whole fruiting body powder, uh, especially when it's cooked down and it's a dried tea, reduce total cholesterol levels, uh, immunomodulating in a variety of ways, and anti-metastatic effects. So very, very uh, beneficial. The dose and side effects, the dose is, again, about three to six grams a day orally. It is administered in, by via IV uh, in Asia sometimes. The toxicity is extremely low. All kinds of um, mutagenicity, carcinogenity, carcinogenicity tests have been performed, genotoxicity, and they're all negative. Very, very safe products, even with intravenous administration. And you can see negative results on the AIMS and chromosome distortion test.